Hello, it is Monday, June 20th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle today, so it should be relatively approachable. And in fact, I just happened to notice that in the um, the wordplay column, which is the New York Times uh, blog associated with the crossword, there's a little blurb that says, uh, Christopher Young's puzzle is a good place for a newbie to start solving. I don't, I actually never really read the wordplay column. I probably should remember to do that, but I just happened to see that. I don't know what it means, of course. I don't know anything about what today's theme will be or what the crossword be, will be like, but perhaps this will be a beginner-friendly crossword in particular, if you, if you know somebody who's um, perhaps you think might be interested in, in solving the crosswords and would need a place to start. I don't know. Uh, I have no way to know until the end of this video. Anyway, this potentially beginner-friendly edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Kathleen Quinn, David Connell, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the inimitable Connor O'Neill. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and helping make this series a sustainable part of my daily work. And if you would like to join their ranks as benefactors and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at uh, patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video. But otherwise, um, if you're a patron at any level, you can get all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So this uh, weekend, um, two videos went up, the weekly Friday mini puzzle speed solve, as well as the most recent New York Times acrostic puzzle, which I really enjoyed. And um, I think I'm improving at those, as I said. Anyway, let's move on to the crossword. Oh, you could also subscribe to the channel and you could also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Those are available. Um, Disc link to the Discord is in the uh, description field as well. All right, now let's get on to this potentially beginner-friendly crossword. As, as stated, it is a Monday puzzle. It was constructed by Christopher Youngs, who has constructed a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It is a themed puzzle, so there will be some kind of theme, but it presumably will be relatively gentle. So let's get solving tiny unit of matter, an atom, I would think that would be. Um, got 100% on a test, you aced the test. To steer a plane toward the runway would be to taxi. That's what you call that, when a plane uh, moves towards the runway to take off. For, if you forget to mention something, you omit it, presumably is what this is. And test one's blank to be a challenge. Well, you could say this crossword will really test your metal. It will be a challenge. This is an example of a clue where it can be useful to um, pronounce it, to sort of say it aloud in the way that it's being given in the in the parentheses. Um, this will be a challenge. This will test one's metal. I sometimes find that makes it easier if you aren't jumping straight to, to what it's looking for. Data sources for election day coverage, exit polls. So exit polls, I'm guessing, will be part of the theme for this puzzle. Um, it just looks like it's in the place where theme answers usually go, especially on a more straightforward or simple puzzle. Same here is ditto. Game with 15 numbered balls is the game of pool. Ballyhoo could be an ado, a big, an event, a sort of commotion, that sort of thing. Singer Paul with a star on Canada's Walk of Fame. Paul Anka, singer with whom I'm not personally very familiar, but does come up in the crossword not infrequently. Zip, zero, nada are all synonyms of, of nil. Uh, München is to Munich as what is to Cologne. Oh, 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 I see. I see. So these are German spellings of German cities, and then there are English language spellings of those same cities. So uh, Cologne would be spelled Köln. I, I, I don't know um, enough about the German language to know how differently these are pronounced, but I do know this is how Cologne is spelled in the German language. Blank mio, my lord, in Spanish. Dios mio, my lord. Subject to a tax as property. To assess, um, assess a property could be to, to levy taxes upon it. Accessories that may feature Windsor knots. Neckties. That's um, Windsor knot is one of the ways to tie a necktie. 
beanie, e.g. is a cap, a type of cap that you wear. Strong negative reaction as from the public backlash, presumably. And to border on something would be to abut it. So this looks, when you read this, it sort of looks like bordering on metaphorically. In other words, uh, this puzzle's bordering on unsolvable, but I think it probably in this case means to literally border something, to to be next to it, to abut it. Leafy fresh herb in a caprese salad. So caprese salad is um, tomato and mozzarella and basil. To tolerate something is to abide it, to accept it. Uh, ringlets in one's hair are curls. And let's just check the crosses since we didn't see these clues. Apple's voice assistant is Siri. Uh, to run a vehicle, for instance, in neutral is to idle it. And where it's sometimes used incorrectly for fewer is less. That is a clue after my own heart. Um, perhaps as a result of this clue, there will be maybe even just one fewer person who mixes up fewer and less. Um, fewer is used for things that are numbered. So uh, if I have 10 apples, I have fewer apples than someone who has 13. Whereas if I have, I don't know, two gallons of water, I have less water than somebody with five gallons of water because you don't measure individual waters sort of collectively measured. I know that these things change over time and perhaps this, perhaps this will ultimately change over time in the English language. But for now, I do, I do observe the less fewer difference. Okay, desert on the Silk Road. Is it the Gobi Desert? Ship's records are logs. Yeah, that looks right. Canal through Egypt. Um, what is it? Let's check the crosses here. And Still I Rise, Poet Maya would be Maya Angelou. And Plead is to Beg. Oh, Suez, the Suez Canal, sorry. <laughs> What's funny is I sort of had the Suez crisis in my mind as an event, but I couldn't think of the actual word. I couldn't think of the name of the canal itself. Um, anyway, just had one of those little moments there, but the Suez Canal. Okay, Cherish, uh, sorry, cher Cherish could be a door perhaps, but let's check the crosses to make sure. A fawn's mother, a deer, could be a doe, a doe, a deer, a female deer. And, oh wow, look at this long answer. Large props held by contest winners in publicity photos. Oversized checks. So large checks often associated with lottery winnings, I think mainly, but also, I suppose not just that. I suppose big charity donations sometimes. People are pictured with oversized checks. Yeah, I guess various winners of all sorts of different things. That can happen. Toni Morrison's Beloved, for one, would be a novel. Plural that makes one wonder why there aren't any meese. Uh, geese. So if it's goose and geese, why is it not moose and meese? Uh, sticky tree secretion could be resin, um, which is sort of expressed from trees and then used in various, uh, has various practical applications. An 18-wheeler is a big, a big rig, big truck. Uh, nasal sounds from someone with a slight cold. What is that getting at? And mournful as poetry would be elegiac. Um, sneezes? Nasal sound for someone with a slight cold. This doesn't seem... I don't know. What is that? Oh, elegiac. Oh, I spelled elegiac incorrectly. I'm sorry. Yes, I did. Elegiac. L-E-E-L-E-G-I-A-C. -E -E there we go. And Oscar winner Mahershala, Mahershala Ali, very talented actor. And lady in progressive ads. Not sure. What about this? Duped could be copied. Oh, Flo is a name. It looks like it could be Flo. Does that work here? Yes, actually, it sort of does, because nasal sounds from someone with a slight cold could be sniffles. There we go. So I was trying to think of nasal sounds in the sense of nasal being used as a kind of timbral descriptor. So speaking speaking with a nasal voice kind of up in that in that nasal register, but 
Uh, no, it just means a noise coming from a nose. That's all it meant here. So that's a case where I was sort of over-reading the clue, perhaps. Late 1950s car stylings designed to look aerodynamic. Oh, fins. Tail fins. So maybe this isn't cut. Duped isn't cut. No, it's not. Oh, that's interesting. So copied is actually, I think, a perfectly reasonable... Well, maybe not. I suppose duped... Duplicated means copied. Duped. I duped it. I duplicated it. I suppose you could say that. It's not as good a match as conned, which would be to dupe somebody, to um, swindle them, uh, is, a, is better. So conned is a better answer. Okay, anyway... Um, Late 1950s car styling, designed to look aerodynamic. I do think it is, it's certainly fins. Um, tail fins, perhaps? Ensnare somebody could be to trap them. What you park in a driveway or drive on a parkway. Um, a, a auto, I guess? I mean, car would be the most obvious answer, but auto for automobile? In four letters with that from, T from, sorry, the A from tail fins, if that's in fact the answer. A clothes presser could be an iron. You would press clothes with an iron. To acquire as a job would be to land a job. And let's check these crosses. Opposite of urban would be rural, so not a city environment. To make up for, I don't know, sin, for instance, would be to atone for it. Small lakes are ponds. No, straightforward enough. And singer um, Borellis, Borellis, Borellis. I've seen this in crosswords before. Sarah Borellis. Uh, DC baseball players. Oh, here, here's our, our revealer. And indeed, this is in the classical revealer location as predicted by Lyle's Law, which indicates that the revealer is likely to be located uh, towards the southeast of the grid in the across answers, and very often in this precise position, three cells north of the southern border. Anyway, DC baseball players, or what the ends of 1721... 39, and 55 across sound like. So we have poles, uh, 27, so poles, ties, 39, checks. Oh, they're European. No, not European. Ties is Asian. So these are nationalities. Oh, they sound like nationals. In other words, poles are nationals of Poland. Ties are nationals of Thailand. Czechs are nationals of the Czech Republic, and uh, Finns are nationals of Finland. So there we go. DC basketball players, the team, the nationals, and the ends of our theme clues sound like the uh, sort of demonyms for nationals of these particular countries. Very clever. Container for mints, you could have a tin of mints. A uh, squirt from an octopus would be ink. And Ireland in literature is Aaron. Uh, that does come up not infrequently as well in the crossword, actually. And like moldy basements and some memes are dank. Dank memes and dank basements. Uh, indeed. So be a beauty could be a gem. This is beauty used as a noun. A real beauty, a real gem. Silly could be daft, perhaps? Let's check the crosses and see. To make a scratch or a dent in a surface could be to mar it. A bird that caws could be a crow. There we go. To anticipate is to foresee something. And a nincompoop is a twit, I suppose. Of a shared cultural identity could be ethnic. So sharing a cultural identity, sharing an ethnicity. Uh, Puerto Rico is an easy sort of conclusion there. Words with tricks and thrills. Word with tricks and thrills. Cheap tricks and cheap thrills. There we go. When you see that word with, it, it, it means, it's sort of an odd phrase because people don't really say that in normal language, but it means you're literally looking for a word that can accompany those words in a, in a common enough phrase, in a phrase that would be common enough that it's reasonable to use in this way. Beginnerish could be easy. Oh, maybe that's why the the theme said, sorry, maybe that's why the puzzle, the blog post said this was a good place for a newbie to start solving beginnerish easy. I mean, it's not the easiest Monday puzzle we've we've ever solved on this channel, but it's certainly not, uh, it's, it's certainly relatively approachable, I'd say. 
blank for the poor, alms for the poor, uh, in quotation marks, so it's sort of the cry of somebody who's collecting for charity. Discreet attention getter could be, pst, you could be signaling to somebody under your breath. Ideologies are often referred to as isms, and a subdermal lump, so a lump under your skin, could be a cyst. Okay, let's finish off this puzzle. Largest branch of Islam is Sunni Islam. Monday follower is, of course, Tuesday, similarly abbreviated. Early Peruvians are Incas, the Incan Empire of uh, Central and South America. Uh, joint just above the heel is one's ankle. And a cotton fabric named for a French city. Is it Lyle, L-I-S-L-E? Let's check these clues to make sure. Three-dimensional would be spatial. Yes, it occupies uh, space in three dimensions. And abandon hope, all ye who enter here from Dante's Divine Comedy, right? So there we go. All right. We have solved a Monday crossword. We have solved a... Um, a beginnerish Monday crossword, perhaps. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if you considered this to be a particularly easy Monday, an average Monday, a tricky Monday. I don't know. It's it's hard to judge with the easier days of the week because even if the constructor is going out of their way to make the puzzle generally approachable, any particular answer or two or three could just happen to be outside of somebody's particular uh zone of knowledge. So it's very hard to make a puzzle that is guaranteed easy for everybody. Um, especially because some people are not native English speakers and they're idiomatic phrases and things like that. But anyway, let me know if you found this to be a particularly approachable Monday puzzle. I'd be curious. And I don't think there was anything really that struck me as needing review. It was relatively straightforward, I would say. I guess well, let's go over the theme again quickly. We had our DC basketball players, our nationals, who are also our poles, well, homophonically anyway. It sounds like these things. They don't spell them out. They don't spell them um, correctly. But we have our poles, our ties, our checks, and our fins. And, and it was just those four, yes, our four nationals from around the globe. Very clever. A nice um, a nice Monday theme in the sense that you can solve all of the theme answers without being aware of the theme, without worrying about the theme at all. And even the revealer, the answer that sort of ties the whole theme together, uh, even that could be filled in based purely on the first part of the clue, if you happen to know it, DC baseball players, which I, at this point I largely know from its repeated inclusion in the crossword. Sometimes it is entered as gnats. Anyway, there we have that. And having solved the Monday puzzle, let's discuss a few clues from the Sunday puzzle. How about that? So Rahul Shah points out that I skipped over the clue for 42A labels on some jars, which resolved to tips as in tip jars. You did say tip when running through the possible vowels, uh, to fill the answer, but I think devoid of context, the word didn't mean anything to you. Yes, I, I do vaguely remember that. So tips, literally a label on a jar soliciting tips. I didn't, um, I didn't land on that at the time, so I suppose I got it through crosses. Um, Brian explains what was going on with the Captain America clue. Marvel sort of retired Captain America. I wonder what that means, sort of. Marvel sort of retired Captain America, aka Steve Rogers, Chris Evans. So it as many of you I'm sure already knew, Falcon was not the surname of the person who was Captain America, I suppose. Um, Steve Rogers, Chris Evans. So he passed on the mantle to Falcon, aka Sam Wilson, played by Anthony Mackie, another hero. Um, so there we have it. Okay, so there are, there are at least two Captains America. And uh, Brian continues, also the Hawkeye answer probably isn't referring to the Marvel character of that name, but it's probably a reference to the University of Iowa. Fun fact, both Hawkeye, the character Clint Barton, and the actor Jeremy Renner are from Iowa. Well, there you go. Well, speaking of the of Hawkeye, which was, which was a word I, whose uh, definition I w wasn't really sure about when I encountered it in the crossword, but does refer to someone from the state of Iowa. I did look it up, and uh, it does refer to someone from the University of Iowa, but that in turn, I think, is because 
Iowa is the Hawkeye State, and that comes from a particular uh, Native American chief who was um, involved in uh, wars between um, uh, wars with Native, Native American tribes that were conducted in Iowa, and it's not entirely. It doesn't seem as though there's a completely historically universally agreed upon understanding of how exactly Iowa became the Hawkeye State. I found at least three similar but st- but still different origins, but it does have something to do with a uh, a Native American chief who was who was named Hawkeye. And now it has been extended to several other Iowa related usages. Okay. Moving on from that, Chasmart Designs explains that Orida, the frozen foods brand, is so named because the facility is on the Oregon-Idaho border. There we go. Did not know that. Thank you, Chasmart's Designs. Chasmart Designs. And Jason Grunau explains that the term eagle in golf means you score two shots under par for a hole. This is not specific to America, as I suspected, but a common term in golf. A birdie is one under par, also a common term. However, for three under par on a hole, such as a two on a par five um, or a one on a, par, on a par four being extremely rare, Americans like to call it a double eagle, but it can also be called an albatross in keeping with the avian theme. I think that's why I thought these terminologies were different because I, I had at least heard, um, so albatross would be what, uh, certainly what people here in the UK would say, but maybe also alternatively in the US and elsewhere, but then a double eagle in the US. Um, and that would be a hole in one, I guess, as well. Anyway, thank you, Jason Grunow, for that explanation. And thank you, everybody who wrote in with explanations. And thank you to you for making it to the end of this video. And uh, since I'm thanking people, thank you to all of my patrons. I do very much appreciate your extremely generous support. Thank you. And um, thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel. All right. That sounds like enough thanks for the time being. So I will take my leave. I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday puzzle. It should be another relatively approachable themed uh, crossword. And I hope you join me for that solve. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. (laughs) 